house right now worshiping the Lord with us thank you Lord I'd like you to open your Bibles in Psalm 100 did the Lord is good that we still have this privilege to worship him to give him thanks and praise for his protection and for what he has done in our lives for all that he has provided for us this week let us read in Psalm 100 in LT version, it says there, Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him, singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are His. We are His people, the ship of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving. Go into His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. For the Lord is good his unfailing love continues forever, and His faithfulness continues to each generation. Lord, we thank You that You are still God. Lord, we acknowledge that You are the one who made us, and that You are able. You are able, Lord, in all of this that we're going through, Lord Jesus. We thank You that still we can enter into Your courts with thanksgiving, O oh God. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you. We honor you. We give you thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise. Just give him thanks and praise, church. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, you are worthy, Lord. We praise you. We bless you. We come into your courts with thanksgiving. Oh, we So oh God, praise you, Jesus, praise you, Jesus, praise you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you for your presence, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord.
to the wild And don't be afraid yeah. Run into wide open spaces Races waiting for you Dance like the weight has been lifted Races waiting Where the spirit of the Lord is
thank you, Lord. We thank you that you let your, your holy presence, Lord God, fill this place this morning, oh God. Even, Lord God, we thank you that your presence will visit those who are joining us online, Lord. We thank you that your presence is even with them, Lord God, today, this morning, Lord. There is no one, there is nothing that we can run on to, Lord, but to you, Jesus. Once we have experienced your glory, oh God, then there's nothing more that we could ask, Lord. Once we are in your presence, then there's nothing more that could ever satisfy us but to you, Jesus.
just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. We just want to be in your presence, Lord. You are the King of glory. You are holy, you are merciful, and you are righteous, oh God. And there is nothing that we can run onto in this time of need, but only in the holy presence of the Lord. And in the midst of that presence, and in that presence, there's this anointing that will envelop us and that will surely carry us through what we're going through this time of need. Surely in Him there is victory. Discovering like oil, the anointing. 
supernatural, extraordinary ways, and do miracles that cannot be explained. Do what only you can do here as we pray.
is the measure of my Father's love. Sing it. Confess it. Great is the measure of my Father's love. Lift him up. Lift him up, church. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Would you just lift your hands towards heaven wherever you are all over the world watching this live stream. Always remember that you have an unction from the, from the Holy One. That unction, that unction changes the atmosphere. In this time of worship, in this hour of need, always remember that you are a child of God. Always remember that there is power inside of you. Not only the power that you have received, but the power that you can release all over this earth. For faith can move mountains of problems. Faith and love, perfect love, will cast out fear. Always remember that you're a vessel of blessing, an instrument of change, a channel whereby the grace of God can flow in and through you. And even as you remember that today, stand in the gap and worship the Creator, the giver of life today. Worship Him in spirit and in truth. Give thanks to Him. Praise His holy name. Hallelujah. Give glory to Him because His name is above every name. And receive that even as you receive the presence of the Lord, for He inhabits the praises of His people. Worship Him in His holy throne. Worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords who is above all. Father, we thank you that even this day, O oh Lord God, nothing can hinder us from worshiping you. In whatever circumstances we are in, O oh Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor. We bless your name. We magnify your greatness, O oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we are not afraid. Lord, we worship you. We proclaim you are good. Every day is a new day for us to give thanks unto you, O Lord God. Today we build our own personal altars, O God. And we cry out, let there be revival in all the lands, O God. For you sit on the throne and you look upon the people who cry out to you this morning. Who say that you are God. That you do not change. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you for the spirit of worship. We thank you for the spirit of praise, O oh Lord God. Let this power of yours, O oh Lord, touch lives, heal bodies, O oh God. Encourage, O oh Lord, the disappointed. Encourage, O oh Lord, those who have been frustrated, O oh Lord. Encourage, O oh Lord God, those who are afraid and are in the verge of panic, Lord God. Lord, release your power upon this land and heal those who are sick right now. Heal those, O oh Lord God, who are not feeling strong, O oh God. Heal those, O oh Lord God, whose minds are being shaken by the circumstances that are happening in this world. Let them pray like they've never prayed before and answer them like you've never answered them before, O oh God. Thank you, Father, for this presence of yours. Lord, we give you praise. And Lord God, in the hearing of your word, let every ear be open and every heart be responding to your revelation in our lives. We thank you. We submit this time unto you. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. And this church will say, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Greet one another with just a holy wave. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. We are on live stream. We know that we are. First of all, good morning to everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the worship team and the media team that are here today supporting this ministry. We thank the Lord that God has given us wisdom and provision for us to have this kind of technology to continue preaching the gospel to all parts of the world. And if you are watching today, we thank the Lord for you. We thank the Lord for your lives, your intercession, together with us, agreeing in prayer and worshiping together with us in whatever timeline you are in. We believe that as, for as much grace that we need today, God is pouring out His grace upon your lives as well. And so be expectant, be excited. 
and uh, be hungry for God's word because this is the day that the Lord has made and this is the hour and the time that we, that we can redeem the things that the people need, the things that the world has lost to give them the truth and hope and love in our Savior Jesus Christ. So let us enjoy this day. Let us be glad because God is with us. And I believe that as much, for as much as God has touched us in our worship, He has touched you wherever you are today. So let us submit ourselves and humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord, for God gives grace to the humble. So um, let's go into the Word this morning. Are you hungry for God's Word? Amen. I believe a lot of people are missing uh, the congregational type of meeting, but we just have to bear it for the seasons of time. This season is eventually going to pass soon. And I believe that we will be able to No, I hope, uh, and I sure hope and expect that's, that God will end this uh, even before we expected it to end. And uh, when this ends, let's have a big celebration and rejoice in the presence of the Lord with a, with a service of thanksgiving to God. Kung pwede lang mamis, tataliwat, sang kaayos, sang ginoo, himuuntay na. Amen? Amen. So please turn your Bibles to Psalm 11. Psalm 11. It's only seven verses. Reading from the New King James Version. In the Lord, I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow, and they make ready their arrow on the string, that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids test the sons of men. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence, his soul hates. Upon the wicked he will rain coals, fire and brimstone, and a burning wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. His countenance beholds the upright. Allow me to share to you this message this morning to encourage us in this season of time. Strengthening your foundation strengthening your foundation it seems to us that prophecy has been unfolding unto us recently that we're just on the first quarter of this year and a lot of things have been happening that is shaking the foundations of this earth even shaking our faith we know that these are perilous times and the frequency of the events of the prophetic utterings in the New Testament are now being unfolded before our eyes. Today, we are living in a very dangerous and chaotic world of global hostilities, natural calamities, outbreak of diseases, as you know, moral depravity, rebellion and corruption, materialism and what we call in modern-day terms the rise of the digital age, the continuous practices of the, of the cult and the occult, postmodernism, and severe religious persecution. And somehow this generation doesn't seem to realize how perilous the world is 
that we are now living in. Kung tanawon mo nga isubong nga agi na lockdown kita, and in a few days from now, even ang mga bus, ang mga bus companies mauntat biyahe, ibalan mo ang mga tao, katig agin ulo, you know, ginatagaan at restraint, ginatagaan at advice, we've been given, you know, uh, safety precautions and even uh, the law, the government, tells us to cooperate so as not to spread this catastrophic or dangerous virus. And still, people don't seem to care. They don't seem to be uh, uh, concerned about the dangers that they can bring as carriers. These are the times where, these are times where, where people are difficult to deal with, hard to control, and not easy to be led or be guided upon. They think authorities, whether they are civil, social, domestic, and even spiritual authorities, are a threat to their rights and privacy of their lives, that they have trouble understanding what submission means. Fear has overwhelmed their outlook in life. It has taken away the best of their judgment, their potential to rise above and overcome the challenges they are facing, and has limited them to excel in a way that would demonstrate to true character of a person that claims to have faith in God. When the world is being shaken by a crisis mankind cannot avoid, fear and self-preservation isolates us from meeting each other's needs. If the foundation of our faith is weak, we follow our natural instinct of fleeing from our moral obligations, fighting for survival, and forgetting who we are supposed to be, the faithful ones. It is evident that we are going through a time of testing as the world is having a hard time handling the crisis we are all facing today. The fact is, the threat is real. The pestilence has been claiming lives has stopped the machinery, the machinery of the economy, caused a lot of business to close down, and countless people will lose their job of, or have already lost it. Even right now, I just heard this news early this morning, the Big Apple in New York, restaurants are, are losing a lot of money. You know, uh, the disease is spreading fast, and uh, business... Uh, uh, the stock market has gone down, um, apparently has gone down uh, like never before. So, uh, and um, countless people will lose their jobs or, 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 or have already lost it. So fear and pandemonium is gravely affecting a lot of people all over the world. And that includes believers who do not have a strong foundation in their faith in Christ. You see, the way we behave in such a time as this will reveal the depth of your belief in Christ. Kung ano subong ang imo sang reaction sang kakalatabo subong mapakita na kung ano kadalom ang imo sang pagtuo kay Kristo. Because our enemy, the devil, has set his sights to destroy the foundation of this generation. He is after our heart. And he, if, if he has our heart, he can distract or deceive us from depending on God, who is able to deliver us and direct our life to where he has promised us to be. We have to trust God's grace in helping us declare our belief in him by the way we live our lives because when things go from bad to worse, we are the ones chosen by God to answer the call to help people find the answers to their need. Psalm 11.3, David wrote, If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? If you are concerned about what is going on in our world today that is affecting the way you live, then this is the time to assess your decisions in life if they are fear-based 
or fear dependent. Because we all know, as the Bible says, fear torments. But perfect love will cast out fear. 1 John 4, 18. Therefore, you need to consider if you have been strengthening your spiritual foundation lately. If your faith is strong enough to withstand the test of time. And if you are still testifying of God's goodness and touching lives by the way you live for God. Because the only person that can take us out of a troubled situation is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of this world, the Deliverer, the Healer. So why do we need to strengthen the foundation of our faith? How important it is for us to have a strong foundation in facing the problems we are encountering in our lives today. Where do you think people run for protection today when they are experiencing the devastation of their lives caused by things we have mentioned earlier, destabilizing their peace and the productivity of their surrounding? How are we handling the hostilities, the calamities, the fatalities and the losses that are constantly happening in this world today? David said in verse 1 of chapter 11, In the Lord I put my trust. Anybody trusting in the Lord here this morning? In the Lord I put my trust. When he wrote this song, he was going through a hard time being persecuted by Saul and his associates. Were, and, his, and, he, and, and his friends were suggesting that he run and hide. What did it say? How can you say to my soul? How can you say to me, flee as a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow. So here, those who are close to him are suggesting that the crisis that he's facing, he'd better run and hide. But David refuses to do so and remains firm in trusting God to help him out in his trying times. You see, when everything seems to be beyond his control, when the situation seems chaotic, when conflict is escalating, he refuses to be carried away by fear and confesses his faith in God to protect him from the crisis he is facing. Beloved, whatever trial or testing comes your way, I declare, know that your God is still on top of the situation. No. That's why David says, In the Lord I put my trust. Nga mahambal ka mo malagyo ko. Nga mahambal ko manago ko. Kay tungkol ginathret nilang kabuhi ko manago ko. Yang nagsalig ko sa ginoo. That's why he says, If the foundations, in other translations says, if the, When the foundations of law and order collapse, What can the righteous do? How many righteous people are listening to me today? What can we do when we are facing, when we are facing f- foundations that are collapsing just before our eyes? In these times, in these trying times where we are, whereby we are being challenged to do something because people who have no knowledge of God can do certain extremes to do wrong. So we have to ask ourselves today if our relationship with Jesus Christ is getting more intimate Because it's hard to relate with the heart of God when you are estranged from Him. One can have a distorted view of God if their relationship with Him has been influenced by people who magnify the negatives, the negative, intimidating circumstances and crumbling foundations. That's why we have to ask ourselves, do you have problems looking at your situation as an opportunity to see God moving on your behalf? Are the foundations you are standing upon shaking you? Ano ang fundasyon sa kabuhi mo? Diin mo ginasandig ang fundasyon sa kabuhi mo? Amo na ang question. Other parts of the world are losing their, their rising generation to the ungodly system of their society. The majority hate or do not know God. They don't want anything to do with church life. And they're 
and there is this issue of focusing more on the externals of religious activity and not on what can really produce radical change in one's life, which is cultivating the fear of God, seeking Him, and trusting in His promises. Because when you really begin to seek God's face, your secrets begin to emerge. Kung pangitaon mo gid ang Diyos sa imo kabuhi, magwa ginada kung ano ang ara sa sulod mo, no? na wala mo madiparahan, ara na dagali. In other words, if you are truly seeking God, He starts to reveal the interior, what is inside of us. Is, is your foundation strong enough to face the future God has, in, has prepared for you in spite of the difficulties you are now facing in life? First of all, let us define what foundation means. What foundations mean. A foundation is a substance on which you built a structure. Foundations actually support a building. It is a position, a primary support that is fixed or placed to hold things together. And as disciples of Jesus Christ, our lives our spiritual structures. How can you say amen to that? The Bible calls us what? God's building. The temple of the Holy Spirit. A spiritual house. God's temple. You can read that in 1 Corinthians. Don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? For we are God's temple, God's building. And 1 Peter chapter 2 says we are a spiritual house. Now, if the foundation is strong and properly laid, it can resist or withstand any trial or trouble. Because the Bible says that this spiritual house has a cornerstone, a bedrock, and His name is Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. That is why... We need to identify our foundations if it is strong and faulty. So let us ask ourselves today, how strong is your foundation in times like this? In Luke 6, verse 46 to 49, it reads, Jesus said, But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my saying and dust them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. Here in Luke, Jesus describes two ways to build a foundation. One is stable, built on the rock. The other is unstable, built on sand. So how well are you building your foundation as a Christian. Because it's tragic to know that there are those who are slipping farther and farther away from the truth. They have drifted, they have drifted away from what is moral or godly. The battle for sexual purity is ongoing. Commitment is by convenience. Discipleship is no longer a priority but an option. Prayer becomes a prescription for problems, not a practice. Submission to authority has become a struggle in serving. Most of us have been going together with our families in church, have experienced powerful visitations of the Holy Spirit, have been involved in ministries and have been blessed. But the question today is, is your spiritual foundation holding on as you continue to encounter 
unexpected challenges in life. For many are building their lives on unstable foundations such as materialism, education, our skill sets, human philosophies, traditions, and whatever you have in mind to consider that that is a foundation. And, but they don't bring us towards spiritual maturity. Crisis comes into our lives, and they will. And when it comes, it will test our foundation, especially in our faith life. So how, stro how strong you are as a Christian will be tested not on sunny days, but on stormy ones. We get overthrown, overpowered, and overwhelmed when we do not take into heart the need to be grounded in the Word of God to overcome such opposing forces. What happens when the foundations of spirituality, family, government and politics, economy, education, arts and culture falls down? What can the righteous do? But David said this in verses 4 and 5 of Psalm 11. The Lord is in His holy temple. Hallelujah. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids test the sons of men. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence is his soul hates. Let me tell you, God is not shutting His eyes on what is happening to this world today. But He is looking at everyone. Everyone that is walking righteously, that is pursuing a life of righteousness, and those also that don't care to live right, but are walking in wickedness. In these trying times, Max Lucado, Pastor Max Lucado said it right, that we are in a time of testing. God is talking, but the, do the people here, are the people here, especially the people of God, are we hearing what God is saying in this situation today? And are we seeing Him moving in our situation? Or are we simply flowing with what the world is doing? Cowering in fear, succumbing to fear. Everything you see right now in social media is about this virus. There's more people attending to the fear of what this virus of this what, what this virus is doing than faith on what faith can do to everything that kills, steals and destroys us. So we need to know that if we neglect or we disobey the will of God, it will destroy the very thing that we have been working hard to build for the Lord. When you don't bother to keep yourself spiritually fit and you allow yourselves to be carried away by what everybody else thinks when God has asked you to do something for Him, you have not grown spiritually. When the spiritual foundation is weak and unstable, it will not withstand the storms of life for nobody escapes the storms. Instead of staying strong and committed, you will find yourselves compromising and spoiling your walk with God. That is why a life that is disconnected from God is a life that is hard to be corrected. You can't teach people or you can't correct people their ways if they're disconnected with God. So a life that is connect, disconnected from God is a life that is hard to be corrected. Proverbs 29 verse 1 attests to that. A man who hardens his neck after much reproof will suddenly be broken beyond remedy. Billy Graham, the Reverend Billy Graham, said this. At the very root of every problem that besets us is the absence of the knowledge of God and man's refusal to obey Him. So how do we look at our foundation right now? Amunin na mga panahon, mga utod ko. 
na dapat mong gidmabalaan kung ano ka kabakod sang imo pagtindog sa pagtuo sa ginoo. Kay ginatayog kita subong tanan. Turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11. Quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11. How do we build a strong foundation? In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 to 15, it reads, For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what? sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. So, if you go back to Psalm 11, it says, the Lord tests the sons of men, and the Lord tests the righteous. If you look at this New Testament passage, you've got to know where your foundation is and how strong it is. So, what and where you are focusing your life right now is actually shaping your future. If your focus is wrong, you're bound to fail. Why? Ask yourself about the depth of your understanding about living the Christian life. There are many excuses and reasons people may have in building up a house without a foundation. But foundations are there to make the structure last for a long time. Ang pinakabudlay, magsugod, kapatid, dogbalay, ang pinakadugay, pundasyon. Kung once na maplastar na ang pundasyon, daasig na lang niya po kanon. That's why ang pundasyon, biskan skyscrapers na siya, dalong-dalong sa ang pundasyon. Kagdugay, mauti you know ginaistudyuhan na maayo ang fundasyon because it has to last for a long time it has to be prepared for anything that would cause it to fall down foundations are there to be built upon so are you a wise builder of the things god has provided for you through jesus christ because if our foundation is wrong God will not give us a quote-unquote building permit to continue building up our spiritual house for we cannot spiritually mature without God's permission. Ang hamba sa Hebrew 6, ni ba? You know, let us move on. Okay? Setting aside the basic foundations of repentance from dead works. Okay? Let us move on towards maturity. Setting aside so we have, we have to check and examine ano ka ba ako ng fundasyon mo na kristyano ka? Gakatay o kabla subong? Gakadala kabla subong sang kahadlok? Are you getting carried away by the fear pandemonium? Isaiah said in, chap in chapter 28 verse 16, Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. Ginakanta na namun sa una sang 80s mo. I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone. Na, bit ni siya na nakuan. Because Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. 1 Timothy 6 19 says, Storing up for themselves. A good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Importanting foundation para, you know, may kasiguruhan na hindi mo na pagbuyan ang promisa sa ginoo sa imok. Having a strong, solid foundation secures your future in Christ. The storms of life may come, but it will not affect you. 
Spiritual warfare cannot be avoided, but you will learn how to engage them as you stand on Jesus, your rock. Again, David said in Psalm 11, verse 4, The Lord is in His holy temple. The Lord's throne is in, he is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids test the sons, the sons of men. Nothing and no one here misses the eyes of God. Okay. Everyone, He's watching everyone. Kung ano sila mag-react sa circumstansya na ini. No? Psalm 11 verse 4 reveals that even if your world is being broken, God is still on the throne. He rules. He's still in control. He is testing our faith, our obedience, and our reliance upon Him. When God tests us, we will see the results or the outcome of that testing if we are living right or not. So are you placing your life in His hands? He's watching us closely, examining our life. He sees if you're living right or not, for He hates wickedness and will judge it. But there is a wisdom key here that we can extract in what David is trying to say. What is that? That when everything seems to be out of course in this world, stay on course with God because He never shifts His course. Amen? Inconsistent ni ang kalibutan, consistent ni ang justa. You know, this can galiko liko niya katalang talang on di ni kaya dal on sang kalibutan niya ang Joshua why na siya steady niyang iya yung isang course kag dira taki na namang upod siya course dira taki na namang lantaw that's why gamba si Bruce fix your eyes on the author and the finisher of your faith because every good gift Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom, listen to this, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Amo nang hambal ni James. Wala niya yagat shift course ang ginoo. His course is the right course. Amen? Okay, so let us continue to focus on the Word. So, You've got to identify if your foundation is faulty or strong. If it's faulty, then you, need to, then you and I need to continue learning and learning how to build a strong foundation. But you also have to test how strong can your foundation hold. In 2 Timothy 2.19, it says, Nevertheless, the firm foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are His. And everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from wickedness. Again, connect what Psalm 11 says. The Lord tests the sons of men and He hates wickedness. So, if we are walking the righteous path, if we're staying on course, we have to abstain from wickedness. Do you know who Jesus is? Or does Jesus know you? Many will call Jesus Lord, Lord, will prophesy in His name, will cast out demons, but not doing the Father's will. The last days are difficult days. The devil is trying his best to hide the reality of hell. And he tries his best, his best shot in tempting Christians that there is no rush to witness and to live a holy life while the whole world is being drawn away from knowing Jesus Christ. Who do you think is going to be used by God to build up the right foundation for the next generation? Who do you think God is using to address this present darkness? This shaking we are going through right now to minister or help, this shaking we are going right now is to minister or help those who don't know what to do or where to run in their time of desperation. Who do you think God is going to use? Or to minister. The ones that are taking God seriously and are maturing in their faith will see the need to keep on holding on to God for such a time as this and help others find their hope in God. Church, 
you've got to know you and I have the key for people to find hope in Jesus Christ. It's better, you know what, that we face this world face to face and stay. We stand upon the cornerstone, the bedrock of our faith, Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2 9 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. So, I close with this. Foundations are important. If the foundations are to be destroyed, ano ang ginasaligan natin sa atong kabuhi? Ginasaligan ba natin kwarta natin? Ginasaligan ba natin negosyo natin? Ginasaligan ba natin abilidad natin? Di natin ginaposisyon sa buong pangabuhi ta. Kaya hindi lang siling sa isa lang kalugar, bilog na kalibutan, gakapiktuhan sila. Diin mo isandig ang pundasyon sa kabuhi mo. Will you be, will you join us to be the generation that will take up the challenge to heed the call of God these trying times and to continue building up His kingdom? Then, if you agree, strengthen your spiritual foundation. Even though the earth is being shaken, the Lord will uphold the righteous. Amen? Psalm 11, verse 7, last verse. For, let's read it all. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. His countenance beholds the upright. Isa lang ka verd, verse tatlo. Righteous, righteousness, and upright. So, how many of us here need God's strength today? How many? Bow your heads, please. Many of you are watching here today. You may be in a situation, you may be a place whereby fear has been escalating. People are panicking. You somehow get tempted to be carried away. Somehow you struggle in your thoughts on what to do. We are concerned. We have loved ones. You know. Working hours have been limited. Travel time, curfew has been imposed. It seems to me that every, every, the world stops. But when the world stops, God does not stop providing for His people. God does not stop strengthening His people. And if you are a child of God, you've got to listen to the voice of God today and not listen to the voice of fear. Listen to the voice of God for His Word, His word says, Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Hallelujah. If you need strength today, agree with me in this prayer. And even those of you who are here with me, lift up your needs unto the Lord. If you need strength, and if you, if you think simply fall short of the answers, and if you, if you feel personally, that you're in need of inner strength from the Lord, then be honest now because it is between you and God. Father in heaven, Lord, it seems the reality that, Lord God, that we see today, that foundations are being shaken. All the seven pillars of society are being shaken, Lord God. Schools have stopped. Economy, the machinery, has slowed down. Lord God, people are running out of answers. They are running out of options. People are in a desperate situation. And fear is capitalizing on this situation. Whoever is coming into your presence today, Father in heaven, hear the cries of their heart. Church, would you lift up your needs unto the Lord? Because the Holy Spirit is going to minister to us today. Hear the cries and the prayers of everyone that is in this service today.
wherever they are, whatever they do. They may be standing. They may have knelt down. They may even have prostrated themselves. We are sitting. We are standing. Yet our hearts are one today to believe, O oh Lord, that you are a great God, that our eyes are upon you. When all else fails, O oh God, you never fail, Jesus. You have conquered death and the grave. And so, Father in heaven, Lord, open up the heavens, I pray today. O oh God, shower your people with hope. Shower their hearts with peace. Let their minds, O oh Lord God, be engulfed with supernatural wisdom and strength. Let their bodies be healed in the name of Jesus. To those of you who need healing, just lift up your hands wherever you are right now. For I speak healing upon your bodies in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity that is attacking your body. I rebuke um, the, the mentality that you are going to give in to that fear of falling in to the disease. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray, Lord, open the heavens this very day, I pray, in accordance to your love and perfect will. Because your will is to heal people. Your will, O oh Lord God, is to restore lives. And Father, let this word that has come across our lives and in your spirit sink deep into our hearts until revelation, O oh Lord, overflows. The revelation that we release, Lord God, much faith, not only for our own personal consumption, but even for those, O oh Lord God, whom we are being led to give such faith. Faith to persevere, faith to overcome, O oh Lord God, faith, O oh Lord God, to shout that our victory is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, let waves of revival come upon the earth, Father. Now is the time for us, O oh Lord, to cry all together. Send revival upon the earth. Send revival, Lord God. Release your mercy and your grace, O oh Father. And release, O oh Lord God, what you have apportioned for your people today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we speak life. We speak health, O oh Father in heaven. We speak divine intervention, O oh Lord God. Divine provisions to keep on showering, Lord God. If our hands are limited to get, oh Lord God, what we need, then we ask that it would come from your hand. You have sent manna even in the wildest extremes, in the wilderness, for your people to be fed. Lord, Lord God, we claim the promises through Jesus Christ our Lord, that the promises, O oh Lord God, even in the covenant promises that you gave to Abraham, will fall upon your people in this very day. So Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord God, that you're giving strength into their spirit. Thank you, Lord God, that their soul starts to rejoice right now. Let's just praise the Lord and worship Him. Thank you, Lord God, that their soul is rejoicing because you are assuring us today that this anointing is destroying the yoke and releases us from every burden, Father. Thank you, Lord God, that our spirits are free, that we are not limited in just in this room to shout out our praises unto you, Father in heaven. Thank you, Lord God, that you have allowed us to enhance our prayer life, Lord God, our fellowship, O oh Lord God. Thank you that you've allowed us to bond together as families to see, O oh Lord God, that there is much value, O oh Lord God, upon our spouses, upon our children, upon our parents, O oh Lord God. That whatever it takes, that when, that when we are in a tight situation, the truth of the matter is you have built us up together to be one family. So, Father, thank you. I declare that you would release the blessings upon your people in accordance to your promises because you love those who walk uprightly. So, that those who walk uprightly, reward them, O Lord. Reward them for their righteous living. Reward them, Lord God, for their positive confession. Reward them, Lord, for standing firm on, on their faith. And, Lord God, when all our words, O God, fall short, of asking what you know is in our hearts, then Father, take control. Have your way 
in our lives. We give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praises. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. And his people will say, A big amen. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Praise. Come on, just praise the Lord for a while. Just praise him. If you have been encouraged by this word, just give thanks unto him. If the word has stretched your spirit, if some, some of those words that I've said has encouraged you, just give thanks unto the one who has released that revelation for you to be quickened today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We stand upon your word. Hallelujah. As you enjoy this day, we know that some of this day in this church, uh, you can bring your tithes and offerings here anytime this day. And the schedules of Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, our office is open for you to bring your offerings. But let me pray in advance for what you're about and what you have set aside to give unto the Lord for this day. Because God, I believe, has continued to pour out His blessings upon your lives. Father, we give thanks to you for the grace that we have received today. Lord, we continue to sow our offerings, to give our offerings us as, as an act of our gratitude, as an act of our worship unto you. Lord, there's no one in whom we can depend to. You are, your word says, the, your, your word says, you are the pillar and the ground of truth. So, Father, we thank you for protecting our families, for continuing to provide for our lives and our needs. And we pray, Lord God, for those who do not have and who are desperate, Lord God, that you would bless and provide them as well so father thank you for the gift of healing thank you for the grace of forgiveness and thank you for the wisdom that you're giving unto us we love you we bless you in jesus name be glorified amen the wing logo tells the story of who we are where we are what we believe in and what we are bound to do as a global church community our sketch of the world is as the earth as it currently is, distressed from its endless and fruitless search for peace, unity, justice, freedom, righteousness, morality, stability, and, whether acknowledged or not, salvation. Salvation, symbolized by the cross, has been made available to the world. It was on the cross and through the death of Jesus Christ that the structure of human sin was broken. It is made across that the world this is afternoon at 3 p.m. Uh, Pastor Jimmy is going to share a powerful word as well to encourage those of you in the house. You know, don't limit yourself to just one service. If you can soak in the Word of God the whole day, it's going to make a difference in your life. It's making a difference in mine, but it's making a difference. So don't be bored. Don't grumble or complain. Don't murmur. Worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness because it's going to make a difference in the way you live today. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Even when I stray away, His love would sort me out and find me. He satisfies, He satisfies, He satisfies my desires. Great is the measure of my Father's love, even when I stray away come back to him his love has sought me out just worship him he satisfied he satisfied he satisfies my desire Great is the measure of my Father's love. Think about His love. Think about His love. 
Think about his goodness. Think about his grace that's brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. How can I? How can I forget His love? How can I forget His mercy? satisfies he satisfies he satisfies my desire how can I forget how can I forget let's worship him we worship you Lord how can I forget his mercy he satisfied, he satisfied, he satisfied my desire. Great is the measure of my Father's love. Sing it. Great is the measure of my Father's love. Remember this as a parting word, saints. The natural man does not understand the mind of the spirit, for they can only be spiritually discerned. So the word of God is living and powerful, alive, sharper than a double-edged sword. It pierces and cuts through. It is a discerner of the intents and the motives of one's heart. A discerner. So when you read the manual of this book, it teaches you how to live even in desperate times. Let me give this encouragement. If you find your book dusty enough, wipe it. If you find the pages of this book sticking around, open it. Because life is inside this book. It comes out. Even though if you don't feel like reading it, read it anyway. Just read it. Talk to God today. It will make a difference in your life. Amen. Father, we end this and we conclude this service. And I thank you, Lord God, for those who have backed me up today inside this room. And even those who are watching. You know exactly what they need. You know the conditions of their heart. And their health but i pray oh lord god we will walk and take courage oh lord god in the face of this fear and we will say by faith i put my trust in the lord because he sits on the throne looking upon me and he loves the upright therefore i will walk in righteousness father Bless your people, I declare, and give them the joy and the rest that do they deserve today. For all these things I pray and give you glory in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And everybody will say, Amen and Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord. And thank you everyone for coming and watching. May God richly bless you today. Go and be a blessing. Thank you so much. Good morning. Thank you, worship team.